The next method for building phylogenetic trees that we will talk about is the group of methods called distance matrix methods. There's a range of different methods that are all based on what we call distance matrices. And I will explain the main ideas in that and we will then look at some particular examples with, with some of these methods. So, what is a distance matrix? Well, the idea in distance-based methods is, as always in phylogeny reconstruction, uh, in molecular evolution at least, that you start out with a multiple alignment of sequences. I've shown a small example here with just three. From the multiple alignment of sequences, the idea is now that you should count what we call the genetic distances between each pair of sequences. The genetic distance between a pair of sequences is simply the number of mutations separating them. So in this particular case, if you compare, for instance, gorilla and human, you can see that there are four mutations separating them. There are four positions in which the gorilla sequence differs from the human sequence. So we now build a small distance matrix. A distance matrix is just a table showing all the pairwise genetic distances. And in the entry for gorilla versus human, we now put the number four, indicating there are four mutations. If we compare human and chimp, you can see that there are two positions that differ. So human and chimp, we put the number two. Finally, chimp to gorilla, if you compare it again, you will see that there are four locations, four positions, the last four in the sequence that differ. So gorilla to chimp also has a genetic distance of four. The other half of the distance matrix is of course going to be the same as the first. It's a symmetric thing, so you only have to fill out one half of, of this matrix. Now, the idea in distance-based methods is that at this point we forget entirely about the original set of sequences. We focus just on the distance matrix and the goal is now to build a tree with branch lengths such that the distances measured along the tree correspond to the ones that we actually observed from the alignment to the distances we have in the distance matrix. And what is a branch length incidentally? Well, a branch length in a tree is a number indicating the amount, the number of mutations that have occurred on that branch. So in this particular example, that's a really simple problem to solve. We see that human and chimp have a genetic distance of two. In this particular tree, I've put human and chimp closely together. There's a distance of one on this branch, a distance of one on that branch. So the total distance measured along the tree between chimp and human is one plus one or two, which is what we also saw in the alignment. Distances measured along trees are called patristic distances. That's a term we'll use now and then. Let's just check the other distances. Chimp to gorilla, the distance measured along the tree will be one plus one plus two, which is four of course, and which is exactly what we have in the distance matrix. The distance from human to gorilla will also be one plus one plus two, which is four, and which is what we have in the distance matrix, which is the number that we observed simply by comparing the sequences. So this is the essence of all distance-based methods. Take a multiple alignment, count the pairwise distances, build a tree such that distances measured along the tree correspond to the distances you saw on the alignment. To put that a bit more formally perhaps, you have a set of sequences, you count all the pairwise distances. The goal is to build a tree where you place the sequences on various leaves. There are different possible ways in which these sequences can be placed on the tree. In this particular case, I put sequence one and three closely together. The goal is now to come up with, to find the branch lengths. I've labeled them A, B, C, D, and E on this tree. To find the branch lengths such that the distance is measured along the tree, the patristic distance, is as close as possible to the observed distance. The observed distance, we refer to that with uppercase d's in these slides, are the numbers we got just from looking at the alignment. The patristic distances, the tree distances, which we indicate with lowercase d's, are the distances that we find by adding the branches, the lengths of the branches separating those two sequences. So for instance, sequence one and two, the distance between them measured on this tree is a plus b plus c. Sequence one to three measured on this tree is the same as a plus d. So every patristic distance corresponds to some sum of branch lengths. 
And the goal in distance-based methods is, as I say, to find these branch lengths such that the patristic distances are as close as possible to the observed distances. I'll return later on to why it's not always possible to make them be exactly like the observed distances. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. At this point, you should take the next weekly quiz for this week, try to solve it. You will in this one get the uh, opportunity to try to manually do a distance-based analysis. I've given you an alignment. You're supposed to, from that alignment, first construct a distance matrix, simply counting the pairwise distances, the number of mutations separating each pair of sequences. Then, from that distance matrix, you should then construct a phylogenetic tree such that the branch lengths, the distances measured along the tree, correspond to the ones you just wrote down in your distance matrix. As soon as you've done that, please come back and continue and we'll talk more about distance-based methods.